Hi everyone, this is Terry. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do this. Um, I'm not really sure if this is a GIMP tutorial or a watch building tutorial. Um, anyway, GIMP basically uh, is a, or stands for GNU Manipulation Program. Um, GNU is an operating system. It's apparently it's pronounced new, so it's a new image manipulation program. Uh, I have to do a little bit of history first though, in as far as, if I go to up here back GIMP, I'm using 2.8.22, not the current version. The current version is 2.10.22, I think. Um, I'm running the old one because basically I'm a lazy shit, but no, there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, they updated it to its current version probably about a year ago now, possibly even a bit longer. They had a lot of bugs and a lot of things I didn't like, so various times I upgraded and ended up going back to this one because I preferred it. I've actually downloaded some plugins on this, which, uh, let me get rid of that, which are things buried in here. Yeah, this GMIC is, is one of them. It won't come up at the moment because there's no image here, but I've added various things. This layer effects is one of the common ones. Once again, they're not normally there on this one, but they are on the current one. Um, so I'll have to try again soon. It's, those bugs have probably been fixed because there's been numerous updates. I basically just haven't got around to it. You have to ignore the, uh, I'm a bit hoarse. So I've, uh, just had a cold lately, so I don't normally sound like this. Um, now, I, once again, a little bit of history. I work on a 2000 or a 2K platform. Um, to put that in perspective, Watchmaker, as you know, is 512 by 512. I do it at 2000 by 2000. I do this for several reasons, but one of them is so I can get the detail that I want, um, and then I actually scale it down. Um, in another program called Inkscape. I'm not a big fan of scaling on this. It, it it's, uh, does, doesn't quite do it for me. There's something quite a little odd about it. But anyway, Inkscape, I find, does it perfectly. So what I do is I generate files on this, on this 2000 platform, and I'll show you. I'll start doing that now if I go through new, and it's a, it's a window that's going to bring up here. It comes up by default because I set it up that way at 2000. This is pixels I'm talking about. So I go, okay, and there's my working platform there. Now, I actually put in guides, numerous ways you can do this. You can do grids, you can do all sorts of things. But I actually start new guide by percentage. That 50% means it'll put it in the mid of the window on the horizontal plane. So I go, okay, go back to the same thing. Oops. Sorry, I do these things without even thinking about it, and then I talk about it, it confuses me. Uh, I convert that to vertical, so that'll give you the center of this working platform. Um, so as I said, I do it at 2000, I reduce them down in Inkscape, uh, scale them down. I did a lot of work a couple of years ago on trying to work out, I was aware that Watchmaker, if your file was too large, or a new, sorry, an image was too large, um, it would distort it, it would degrade it, it would do all sorts of odd things. And I actually, through trial and error, found out even at 1000 or 1K, it still didn't like it. But the magic figure was 908. I've no idea why. That may have changed by now. Um, Alex, there's so many things been done to it over the years, who knows? But that's where it ended up, and I've just stuck with that. So I started 2000, I, I send the file over to Inkscape reduce it down to 908 and then import those files directly or export them and import them into Watchmaker uh, at 908 and then scale them down in the app to 512 and as you know they come out perfectly clear. That stops a lot of the issues people have with hands in particular but um, our markers is another one. Anything that's in a regular shape like a triangle for instance uh, you end up getting that horrible sawtoothed edge which is just a lack of definition basically. This way avoids all of that. It's one of the reasons I started doing this. So anyway, I will try to do these for about 10, 15 minutes, I guess, or I think it'll just become a bit boring. Um, and then I'll just continue on the next one, but uh, where I finish off on this one. Uh, but I do need you to get back to me because I, I need to know in particular if this audio is any good. It's just a cheap, crappy webcam I've got. I think it's working, but how good it is, I don't know. Only you can tell me. Now, my starting point is I tend to use templates a lot. Um, 
um, you guys out there that that um, will take an image and clean it up, you know what I'm referring to is you know getting a nice clear front on high graphic image. That doesn't particularly bother me because I tend to work with odd stuff that there aren't a lot of great images around, or they're not central. They're not. They're not. Um, they're not from the front. They're not in perspective. They're from a weird angle, and you may or may not know, but it's one of the reasons a lot of images of watches are taken slightly out of kilter and I think it's um, it's a perspective thing I think when they take the photograph but it also makes it really hard for people to mess around with them um, so anyway I've actually what I'm going to do if I go file open go to my desktop I'm going to do a thing called an aqua star it was something I was going to do which is this one here and I did take an image of that's the one there so if I just bring that one up to JPEG file that's the size, hit open, there it is. Now, what I'm gonna do is remove this, so I do have an image, and I, that's it. I use that basically more as reference. I don't use anything off it. I use it for coloring, for scaling, things like that. So to actually get that to what I want to save as a file, as a, as a, as a template file, I suppose, um, I go back, put some grids in, not overly important on this. That's what happens there. <laughs> Control Z, by the way, will always undo the last thing you do. Uh, I use that a lot. The control button actually is one of the hot keys, um, and it's used in a combination of like Control M, Control D. I use it so much, I go through keyboard as a control label, if you like, or the tag is completely erased. Anyway, um, we go to guides, we get, sorry, guides by percent. And what that'll do, it'll put it in, in a vertical plane. 50%. So put it dead center. It may not be the center of this image because this image is, you can actually see is not in the, that image is not in the center of that frame. Anyway, not relevant at this time. So if we go new guide, we change that to horizontal, that will actually give you the center of that frame, not necessarily the center of the picture. So now we need to go, what I want to do is, as it, mark a perfect circle. Now, or an ellipse as they call it on this one, which is this one up here, and as you can see, does that. I don't want to see it's pulling from the corner. I find that a bit annoying. So if you put expand from the center and fixed aspect ratio, so what that'll do, if I go to the center there, pulls the circle out from the center. You can see this highlighted, right? Now, these boxes here, very relevant. You'll be using these all the time. This one, as it says, is just replace the current selection. So if I do a circle there, overlap another one, it just disappears. It doesn't, don't even have to overlap it. Just do that, do that, it'll disappear. Very self-explanatory. You can actually see these are coming up. This window here is showing every action, so you can undo them. I don't normally run that. I normally run it there because that runs in the background. If you make a mistake, you can bring that up and you know go back to that point there if you want. Anyway, this is your current layers. Basically, there's only one layer here. That's why there's just that one there. That means you can view it. That means it's not. You can also lock it there so you can't erase it by mistake. Um, anyway, we will put the guide back in. I've, I've undone that. Actually, you can see I've removed the horizontal guide once you reset it though, it goes to the very last point. See, it's now gone. So I can't use that. So I just go image, guide, new guide, horizontal, center again. Now, sorry, getting back to these. Now, if I go to the next one, it actually says add the current selection. The difference is this could be a square, it could be a circle. We'll get to that later. There's a circle. Now, if I do another one, you can see what it does. It tends to overlay it. Well, it doesn't tend to overlay it. It does overlay it. You can even put a separate one there, separate one there. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't remove anything you've previously done. So if I go Alt-Z, back to there. The next one's kind of interesting as well because this will be subtract from the current one. So if I've got a circle there, see it's now not highlighted. And it doesn't really work any different to this one, except the difference is, is when you use two in conjunction here. We do, there's the first one, highlighted. I'll make it a bit bigger so you can see it on this white background. Now if we use this one, this is where it becomes relevant. You click off it, which leaves that highlighted. Then you can go like so. 
Now you can see they're both highlighted. What this will actually do if I hit delete, it'll delete that section there. Alt Z gets back. This is where it also gets interesting. If you go Control I, it inverts the selection. So what it'll actually do is that it reverts, it deletes what's outside what you've highlighted. So Alt Z to take it back, Control I, go back to normal. You get used to that. Sorry, we don't want to share that. Z, oops, Alt Z, just get rid of those. Go back to where I started. Get rid of shear. That is, a, that is another tool we can use. These are all the tools you can use. There are others. These are the ones I mainly use. That's why I have them here. So if we go back to circle, we'll zoom in, which is once again is control. I'm just using the mouse wheel to zoom in. That's probably about the center of the watch or center of this image. So what I do is start there, hold the left mouse button. You see it's not highlighted. My mistake. See, I'm on this box. It gets a little confusing, but you have to keep going back to that one in this instance. So once again, get it in the center, left mouse click, hold it, zoom out, hold it again. And what you can do, oops, I've gone back to that, my mistake, don't worry about that. Now, you need to, you see where this orange bar comes up? Now if you do this, it's enlarging it as a, as a circle, but if you just click in here, it's taking it out, taking the center line. You can actually see, that's a better idea, you can see that little X is the center, that's moving the whole thing out, I don't want to do that. So I'll get that back to about the center. Now once again, just these outer boxes, you can see if I take it to about there, it's not quite right, we'll get that about on the tooth, somewhere about that, on this tooth of this outer, well it's a frame, it's not really a bezel. Um, that's not bad there, I'm just zooming in and out to have a good look. Now, here you go. Now, if I uncheck those, it allows me to move this independently, the four sides being a circle. So I will go to about there. We know the top and bottom are correct. Across to this side, as you can see, it's about right there. Now, what that's actually done, though, it has thrown this out of a perfect circle. We'll address that in a minute. So if I go delete, that's what it does. Deletes that. Don't want it to do that. Control Z to go backwards. If I go Control I, that is kind of what I want to do. But this is white, and I actually need this to be transparent because I want to save just this image. So Control Z, and how you do that is really quite simple. Uh, you go into Layer, Transparency, Add Alpha to Selection. Now that has added Alpha to the entire selection, not just that. Um, uh, but what it will do, an alpha is um, it's a transparency layer. So once you remove this layer on top, it leaves a transparency underneath. So if I do that now, that's what it does. So if I go back, invert the selection, move the center. Not that you, I want to do that in that case, just to demonstrate it. So we go Control I and then Delete removes the outer. You can leave this highlighted if you like. I need to reduce this frame down now because I don't need it to be that size. Um, so we go to Auto Crop. You can go Zealous Crop, does some weird things, don't use it. Well, I don't use it. And what that's done is reduce this down to the actual image. But as you can see, it's not a perfect circle. 706 by 709. So you can actually now go into same, same folder again, image again, and just above it here is scale image. Hence, there's the 706 by 709. If you leave this linked, these will, as you can see, this is the height is scaling. They're both scaling up at exactly the same rate, which I don't want it to do. So I want to do that, highlight that, put that as 2000, just tap down to the next one, go 2000. So that'll end up making that exactly 2000 by 2000, which is my working platform. So I've actually scaled this image up so I can make it and then scale it down again. Uh, XY resolution, not sure you really need to do this. I just always have. I've increased that to 3000. Makes the file big, but you don't end up using this anyway. It's only really for a template. So I hit scale and there's the file. As you can see, it's now become 2000 by 2000. I click back on that box, click off, just get rid of the highlight, um, and that's the image. So now I'm going to save that, and I'm going to use that 
as a template to build up the new one. So you right click, go file. This is actually interesting. You need to be aware, very much aware of this. Save and save as is dramatically different to export as. Export as will just export the image, as you can see. If I export the image to various file formats, such as PNG. So I go export as. I'll show you what the other one does in a minute. Um, I tend to, because I just this is just a file that I refer to. I call it base image. Call it whatever you like. I also convert the file type. PNG, just easier to work with. And you go, and you hit desktop, export, replace. Now it's already one there because I was messing around with this before. But normally that'll just send it to the desktop. Now, as an alternative, if I go file, save as, brings up a slightly different XCF file. And what this is really relevant because I use this numerous times every time I do a build. And what it is, it generates a file that contains all the information, all the layers. We'll go back to layers. If there's you know 100 layers there, you've done a pile of work. I do it, I save it to save point, basically a waypoint, call it whatever you like. Um, I use it virtually every time I do anything major on it because it's happened to me before about a power failure, you'll lose everything. This doesn't save it. Sorry, this does save it. If, if you're working on a computer, it won't save it. it loses it instantly. Um, and I did an entire build once, never thought about it, forgot about it, and lost a lot. Took to start again. So that was annoyed the shit out of me. Um, so I use this a lot, and it gives you that point. You can save it onto your desktop. So if you go desktop, um, I won't do it at the moment because it'll save it under the same name. But I normally call it the name of the watch dot and leave the XEF as it is. And when you go to launch GIMP next time, you can load you can load GIMP, the operating system, and then load this file, and it'll bring all your information back, and you can just continue on. So even if you're finishing up for the day, what have you, and you want to re continue on, just use this export. Get back out of there. Save as. Sorry, not export, because export would just export the file. This will save all that information. It makes life so much easier. So I can actually now get rid of that, because I've made it. That's going back to my original uh, working platform of 2000 by 2000. So if I go File and Open, sometimes, and I don't know why it does this, you can go into Recently Used and it'll appear. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. If you go into Desktop, though, and go down alphabetically, Base Image, there it is. Now that's come in as a layer. Once again, I just get my guides back because it's a starting point. Now it may not line up directly with this image. I'm not actually concerned about that. It's where I start building from. It's a starting point. New guide by percent. We go vertical. There it is there. As it turned out, it is fairly close. But you can turn that off and on. This, the, the layer sequence works exactly the same as Watchmakers. But if you create a new layer, and I'll just do it now, just while I'm talking about it, another layer, 2000 by 2000. Now, if I put it over the top, and if I draw, I'll just draw a square this time. I'll worry about this later. I can fill that with that. I'll explain all that later. There it is there. Now, if I put that underneath, so it's the top layer that hides what is below. So quite often I will leave this one at the top. I can just toggle that off and on so I can look at it while I'm building the watch underneath. But you can move these around. It makes no difference. You can also, that views it, obviously, the eye. But you can also lock it. It doesn't make any difference to how you view it, but it means you can't get rid of it. You can't erase it. Um, and that's probably as far as I go on this one. Just let me, once you can highlight that, delete it because it serves me no purpose. Um, this will be the start of the new build. It was a watch I was going to do anyway. Um, I'm hoping to get into a bit of metal work and hands. Um, there's a little bit here, but I might even do those as a, as a separate tutorial because I think this is going to go on a while. Um, it's taking me a bit longer to think about this stuff than I thought. So let me know what you think, particularly the audio. I don't know how good it is. And I'll um, continue on and I'll, well, I'll continue on on the next one.